Asao mu lake and war ma tulahi wa barakatu. Before continuing to the video, I remind you to help this channel develop by subscribing, liking, commenting, and sharing. Thank you. The first of Jul Hija. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives the mistakes of Prophet Adam. So, whoever fasts on the first of Jul Hija, his small sins will surely be forgiven. The second of Jul Hija. The prayer of the Prophet Yunus was granted by Allah and removed from the fish's stomach. So, whoever fasts on the second day of the month of Jul Hija, his reward is comparable to fasting for one year without disobeying Allah. The third of Jul Hija. Allah granted the prayer of Prophet Zakaria who wanted a son. Even though Prophet Zakaria was already 120 years old at that, time. So, whoever fasts on the third of Julhijah, all his wishes will be granted by Allah. The fourth of Julhijah. Prophet Isa was born by his mother, Maryam in the corner of the city of Bethlehem in good health, even though he had shocked his people. Because he was born from a virgin, whoever fasts on the fourth day of the month of Julhijah, Allah will remove the troubles of life and poverty, and later on the Day of Judgment he will be gathered with noble people. The Fifth of Julhija Prophet Musa was born with the name Yakubay in the village of Uxar, Egypt. He was then raised by Pharaoh and turned against Pharaoh because of his arrogance and arrogance. Whoever fasts on the Fifth of Julhija will surely be spared from hypocrisy and the torment of the grave. 6. Julhija Allah opened the door of goodness to Prophet Muhammad Shalalahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, whoever fasts on the 6th of Julhija, Allah will send down His mercy and avoid punishment forever. Julhija 7 the gates of hell are closed and locked, and will only be open after the tenth day of the month of Julhija. Whoever fasts on the seventh of Julhija, thirty doors of distress will be avoided and thirty doors of ease will be opened for him. The eighth of Julhija. Allah ordered the prophet Ibrahim to build the Kaaba. When the Kaaba building was finished, Prophet Ibrahim pondered whether what he had done was rewarded or not. So it is called the eighth day of the month of Julhija, with Yom al tarwiya which means the day of contemplation and thinking. Some say Prophet Ibrahim dreamed of getting an assignment from God to slaughter Ismail. So, all day Prophet Ibrahim thought whether the order was really from God or from Satan. So, Whoever fasts on the 8th of Julhija, Allah will give him a reward whose value only Allah knows. Julhija 9 Prophet Ibrahim was sure that his dream on the ninth night was really from Allah and not from Satan. Today is called Yomu Arafah because the place used to slaughter Prophet Ismail is called Arafah. Whoever fasts on the 9th of Julhija, Allah will forgive his sins for one year that has passed and one year to come. That's all of the videos from Mix Hura Hura that I can summarize. Remember to help this channel grow by subscribing, liking, commenting, and sharing. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Before proceeding to the video, we remind you to support us by subscribing, liking, commenting. Rasulullah mentioned that one of the harem months is the month of Julhija. Behind its privileges as a sacred month, the month of Julhija has its own history. In this article, Mix Hura Hura will review the history of the month of Julhija. Apart from being a harem month, one of the features of the month of Julhija is that it has the best days throughout the year. Namely the first ten days of the month of Julhija.
The Messenger of Allah said, There is no day when good deeds are more loved by Allah than these ten days. The companions asked, Is it better than Jihad fi Sabalila? He said, Yes, better than Jihad fi Sabalila, except for someone who goes out to wage Jihad with his wealth and soul and then he never comes back. H.R. Bakari The Origin of the Name of the Month of Jul Hija The scholars say, the name Jul Hija consists of the word Zu, which means owner, and Al Hijia, which means Hajj. This name has been used since the Jahiliya era. At that time, the ancient Arab community had performed many pilgrimages, as taught by the Prophet Ibrahim. Hajj is one of the pillars of Islam. The pilgrimage is carried out in Mecca, with a series of certain rituals. Therefore, Muslims around the world flock to the city of Mecca every year to perform the pilgrimage. The implementation of the pilgrimage was also taught by the Rasulullah. Hajj is carried out in the months of Hajj Shawal, Jul Qadda. Up to the first ten days of Jul Hija, the peak of the pilgrimage is on the ninth of Jul Hija. When pilgrims perform Wukuf in Padang Arafah, History of Hajj in the month of Jul Hija. The command Hajj was originally given to Prophet Ibrahim. However, the implementation of the pilgrimage experienced many changes over time. Because of that, Allah again sent down the command Hajj to Rasulullah Shallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah said, And call on people to perform Hajj. Surely they will come to you on foot or by riding a thin camel. They will come from all over the place. Q.S. Al Hajj, 27. Allah ordered that the Hajj worship be carried out, as originally taught. Until then, the Hajj began to be obligatory for Muslims in the year 6 Hijriah. There are opinions that say the year 3 or 5 Hijriah. The obligation to perform Hajj appears after the following verse was revealed. In it there are clear signs, among them the grave of Ibrahim. Whoever enters it, the Baitullah will be safe. Carrying out the hatch of the Baitullah is a human obligation towards Allah, that is for those who are able to travel there. Whoever denies the obligation of Hajj, then verily Allah is the most rich of the world's Q.S. Ali Imran, 97. Rasulullah Shallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was only able to carry out the Hajj in Tan Hydria because Mecca was previously controlled by the Quraysh infidels. He did succeed in conquering Mecca in 8 Hydria. However, because there were other things that had to be completed, his pilgrimage was finally postponed until 10 Hydria, exactly three months before he died. This is the reason why the pilgrimage performed by Rasulullah Shallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is called Hajwada, or Farewell Pilgrimage. Other events in the history of the month of Jul Hija. 1. Prophet Ibrahim reflects on the contents of his dreams. Provisions for Hajj cannot be separated from the historical events experienced by Prophet Ibrahim. On the 8th of the month of Jul Hija, he received a revelation to slaughter his favorite son. The revelation that was present in this dream made him doubt. He was worried it was a whisper of the devil. This is where the term Tarwiyah day, for the 8th of Julhijah comes from, that is, a day of thinking or contemplating. But, there is also an opinion that says the term Tarwiyah day comes from the word Erdawa, Yartawi, that is, drink a lot because many people bring water or drink as provisions for the pilgrimage on Tarwiyah day. The Prophet Ibrahim decided to slaughter his son. After the ninth night, finally, the Prophet Ibrahim was sure that his dream was indeed an order from Allah. He then told Ismail, and Ismail obeyed with great piety. Seeing the piety of his servants, Allah replaced Ismail with a slaughtered animal from heaven when the Prophet Ibrahim did the slaughter. 
This event makes the 10th of Julhijah the Eid al -Adha. Then followed by Tasirik Day until the 13th of Julhijah. 3. The Akaba Agreement in the month of Julhijah. In the month of Julhijah, the Akaba Agreement occurred which involved the Aus and Khazraj people with the Rasulullah Shalalaihu Alaihi Wasallam. On the hill of Akaba, they promised to help the preaching of the Rasulullah Shalalaihu Alaihi Wasallam in Yathrib Medina. At that time, after the high season where many people came to Mecca, Rasulullah met several tribes to preach Islam. But many refused. Until then he met six people from the Khazraj people from Yathrib. After meeting on a Kaaba hill, they accepted Islam and were going to preach it at Yathrib. This time it was not only attended by the Khazraj, but there were also people from the Az from Yathrib as well. This event occurred in the twelfth year of prophethood, or two years before the migration of the Prophet Muhammad to Yathrib Medina. Tenjul Hijik can also be called the Big Day of Eid al -Adha, where today coincides with everyone performing the pilgrimage in Mecca, and we are sunnah to perform the Eid al -Adha worship. And on this day, also Muslims perform the slaughter of sacrificial animals. Eid al -Adha is held every tenth of Jul Hijjah. Usually, on this holiday Muslims carry out sacrifices or slaughter livestock, such as cows, goats and sheep. The sacrifice of the sacrificial animal is carried out after the Eid al -Adha prayer. Eid al -Adha can also be referred to as the Feast of Hajj or Eid al kurban The naming is because on that day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the opportunity to get closer to Him. Muslims who have not been able to perform the pilgrimage are given the opportunity to sacrifice by slaughtering sacrificial animals as a symbol of piety. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The history of the celebration of Eid al Adha is based on the example of Prophet Ibrahim. At that time, he was ordered to place his wife Hayyar with Prophet Ismail, his son who was still breastfeeding. They were placed in a valley that was barren, arid, and uninhabited. Prophet Ibrahim himself did not know what the true intention of Allah's commandment was. But, both Prophet Ibrahim and his wife accepted the order with sincerity and trust. This event is even enshrined in the letter of Ibrahim verse 37, along with the sound of the verse. رَبَّنَا إِنِّي أَسْكَنْتُ مِنْ ذُرِّيَّةِ بِوَادٍ غَيْرِ ذِي زَرْعٍ عِنْدَ بَيْتِكَ الْمُحَرَّمِ رَبَّنَا لِيُقِيمُ الصَّلَاةَ فَاجْعَلْ أَفْئِدَةً مِنَ النَّاسِ تَهْوِي إِلَيْهِمْ وَارْزُقْهُمْ مِنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَشْكُرُونَ Meaning, Ya Allah, in fact I have placed some of my descendants in a valley that does not have plants near your house by Tello, which is glorify. O oh, our Lord such so that they establish prayer. So make the Gaudi as humans tend to them, and give them sustenance from fruits, hopefully they will be grateful. As told by Ibn Abbas, when Sidi Hayyar ran out of drinking water so she could not breastfeed Prophet Ismail, she looked for water while jogging Sa'i between the hills of Shafa and Marwa seven times. Suddenly Allah sent the angel Jibril to make the Zamzam spring. After which the Prophet Ismail and Sidi Hayyar obtained the source of life. Eid al -Adha is also known as Eid al-Nar, which means the Feast of Slaughter. This was the most severe test that befell Prophet Ibrahim, but, because he was patient and steadfast in facing the test, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him an honor as Allah's lover or commonly called Kalilullah. After Prophet Ibrahim carried the title, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed the angels to test the faith and piety of Prophet Ibrahim. Starting from wealth the family did not make Prophet Ibrahim negligent from Allah's commands. Ibn Katsir in the interpretation of Al-Quran al-Azim said, Prophet Ibrahim's statement that he would sacrifice his son if God wanted it was then used as a test material 
Allah tested Prophet Ibrahim's faith through his dreams. In the dream, he was ordered to sacrifice his son, Prophet Ismail, who was seven years old at that time. Prophet Ibrahim was ordered to sacrifice Prophet Ismail with his own hands. This event is stated in the letter as Safat verse 102. قال يا بني إني أرى في المنام أني أذبحك فانظر ماذا ترى قال يا أبت افعل ما تؤمر ستجدني إن شاء الله من الصابرين. Meaning, Ibrahim said, O oh my son, in fact I saw in a dream that I slaughtered you so think about what you think. Ismail replied, O oh my father, do what you are commanded. God willing, you will find me among those who are patient. When the two of them were ready to carry out God's command, the devil came and said, Ibrahim, what kind of parent are you going to say? Just slaughter your child with various kinds of seduction and persuasion. Satan seduced the prophet Abraham. Then, Allah's lover immediately took a stone and threw it, while saying, Bismillahi ala huikbar. Therefore, now pilgrims throw stones, while saying, Bismillahi ala huikbar, according to what Prophet Ibrahim said at that time. Then, when Prophet Ibrahim had not yet swung the knife at Prophet Ismail's neck, he immediately let go of the ropes and hands. The intention is so that there is no impression in history that the Prophet Ismail was forced and demanded by his father. After Prophet Ibrahim had made up his mind and the knife was about to be moved, Suddenly Allah called out with his word, ordering him to stop what he was doing. Allah has blessed their tawakal and replaced a goat as a sacrifice. The story is contained in the letter as Safat verses 107-110, which reads, Meaning, and we ransomed the child with a large sacrifice. Meaning, we immortalize for Ibrahim good praise among those who came later. Salamun ala Ibrahim. Meaning, that this prosperity they be bestowed upon the Prophet Ibrahim. Meaning, thus we reward those who do good. The greatest sacrifice of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. In the history of mankind made him a great prophet and messenger too. From this history, it can be seen that the piety of a servant to his Lord is very noble. That is the history of Ayd al-Adha which falls on Tanjul Hija, from the story of the example of Prophet Ibrahim. Hopefully this story can add to our faith. That's all of our summary in this video. Hopefully, it can add to your insight. Don't forget to continue to support this channel by subscribing, liking, commenting. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Before entering the video, we remind you not to forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. Back again with us, Mix Harara. Because now we will enter the month of Julhijah. We will explain the important days in the month of Julhijah. Now we will discuss the explanation of the Tariya day Julhijah and Arafah day 9 Julhijah. Here's what we can summarize. The eighth of the month of Julhijah is called the Tariya day. Meanwhile, the ninth of the month of Julhijah is called the day of Arafah. On these two days, Muslims who do not perform the pilgrimage are advised to fast sana. Julhijah apart from being the pinnacle of the pilgrimage are also very historic days. Especially on Tarwiya and Arafat days, all Muslims who are carrying out the pilgrimage gather in the holy land of Mecca. On that very day, all pilgrims merge into one, eliminating all differences in the world and removing all remnants of polytheism and arrogance. They gather from all corners of the world, as self-manifestations as obedient servants of God. 
those who have fulfilled all the provisions of the pilgrimage, flock to start the pilgrimage on that day, and the peak coincided on the 10th of Julhija. However, what is the reason behind naming Tarwiya Day and Erfa Day? What's the history? Naming Tarwiya Day I'm Am Fekredin, Aratsi 544-606, H in one of his masterpieces said, that Tarwiya Day is the eighth day of Julhija which means thinking or contemplating. Therefore, Tarwiya Day is synonymous with a state of thinking and contemplating about events that are still full of doubts. Fekredin Aratsi quotes several scholars' opinions regarding the reasons behind the naming of the day in his book. فَفِيهِ ثَلَاثَةُ أَقْوَالٍ أَحَدُهَا أَنَّ آدَمَ عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامُ أَمَرَ بِبِنَاءِ الْبَيْتِ فَلَمَّا بَنَاهُ تَفَكَّرَ فَقَالَ رَبِّ إِنَّ لِكُلِّ عَامِلٍ أَجْرًا فَمَا أَجْرِي عَلَى هَذَا الْعَمَلِ قَالَ إذا طفت به غفرت لك ذنوبك بأول شوط من طوافك قال يا ربي زدني قال أغفر لأولادك إذا طافوا به قال زدني قال أغفر لكل من استغفر له الطائفون من موحد أولادك قال حسبي يا ربي حسبي وثانيها أن إبراهيم عليه السلام رأى في منامه ليلة التروية كأنه يذبح ابنه فأصبح مفكرا هل هذا من الله تعالى أو من الشيطان فلما رآه ليلة عرفة يؤمر به أصبح فقال عرفت يا رب أنه من عندك وثالثها أن أهل مكة يخرجون يوم التروية إلى منا فيرون في الأدعية التي يريدون أن يذكروها في غدهم بعرفات. Meaning, there are three opinions behind the naming of the Tarwiyah day. One because the Prophet Adam alayhi salam was ordered to build a house, so when he built it, he thought and said, My Lord, Actually, everyone who works will get a wage. So what is the reward? Will I get from this job? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala replied, When you do tawaf in this place, then I will forgive your sins in the first round of your tawaf. Prophet Adam begged, Increase wages me. Allah replied, I will forgive your descendants if you do tawaf here. Prophet Adam begged, increase my wages. Allah replied, I will forgive the sins of everyone who asks for forgiveness while carrying out the tawaf of your unified offspring Allah. To in fact, Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam dreamed while sleeping on Tarwi a night, as if he wanted to slaughter his son. So when morning came, he thought whether the dream was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or from Satan, when the night of Arafah, the dream came again, and was ordered to slaughter. Then the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam said, I know, O my Lord, that the dream is from you. 3. In fact, the people of Mecca go out on the day of Tarwiyah to Mina. Then they think about the prayers that they will pray the next day, on the day of Arafat. Fakadin Arazi, Tafsir Mafathal Gabe, by Root, Daryl Fiker, 2000, Chapter 5, Page, 324. Sayyik Nid Ahmadin Al Hazan bin Muhammad bin Hussein An Nasaburi, in his Tafsir An Nasaburi, stated that the Tawiya day has a very extraordinary history, namely being a day of preparation for provisions for the pilgrimage. People collect huge amounts of water to distribute to prospective pilgrims. They will give it to the congregation after feeling tired and thirsty when traveling to Mecca. Or they will distribute the water they have collected to the congregation during the pilgrimage, considering the arid land of Arabia and the lack of water at that time. It is like 
Those who are carrying out the pilgrimage are people who are very thirsty for Allah's mercy. Therefore, Allah has prepared His mercy for all of them after performing worship by having their sins forgiven. Nidhamuddin and Nasaburi, Tafsir and Nasaburi, Beirut, Daryl Pohl, 1999, Chapter 1, Page 489. The Naming of Arafah Day. Arafah Day is the ninth day of Julhijah. Meanwhile, with regard to the meaning of the word Arafah, scholars have different opinions. Some say Arafah is taken from the word Idaraf knowledge because on the day of Arafah Muslims know and justify Al-Haq Allah as the only one who must be worshipped, Allah is the Great One. There are also scholars who argue that Arafah is taken from the word Arafah which means a good smell. That is, by carrying out the pilgrimage at Arafah, it shows that people want to repent to him, letting go of all the mistakes that have been made, and avoiding sin. Thus, indirectly people are trying to get heaven with Allah, and one day they will have a good smell in heaven. Allah says, <laughs> Meaning, and enter them into heaven that he has allowed them. Muhammad 6 The meaning of the verse above as conveyed by Imam Fakhreddin Arazi is, actually those who sinned when they repented in the land of Arafah, indeed they have been released from the dirt of sin, and strive with worship with Allah, so that they will become fragrant souls free from sin and guilt. According to Arazi, there are eight reasons behind naming the ninth day of Julhijah called the day of Arafah, as follows. One, in fact, that day was the momentum for the meeting of two married couples who were already together in heaven and then expelled to the world. And finally by Allah on that day, they met in the land of Arafah, Mecca, namely the meeting of Prophet Adam alayhi salam with Sayyid Ahawa. With that meeting, the two of them came to know Arafah from one another. 2. The angel Jibril taught the procedures for performing the pilgrimage to Prophet Adam alayhi salam. And when he arrived at the land of Arafah, Jibro said to him, Do you already know? Prophet Adam alayhi salam replied, Yes, I know. Therefore, that day is known as the day of Arafah now. 3. Because on that day the Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam knew Arafah, the truth of the dream of slaughtering his son Ismail, which he experienced and confused it. 4. On that day the angel Jibril taught about the procedures for carrying out the pilgrimage to Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam and took him to Arafah. Arriving there, Jibril asked, Do you know about the way of Tawaf and where it is performed? Prophet Adam alayhi salam replied, Yes, I know. 5. Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam went to Sham and left his son Prophet Ismail alayhi salam and his wife Sayyid Hayyar in Mecca. They had not met for several years. Then by all the two of them were brought together on the day of Arafah. 6. Due to the dream of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam to slaughter his son, Prophet Ismail alayhi salam, as previously explained. 7. Because on that day, the people who were performing the pilgrimage named it Arafah, when they stopped at the land of Arafah. 8. Because on that day Allah informs Yata Arafu and gives good news to those who are performing the pilgrimage with forgiveness, magfir and mercy. Arazi, Tafsir Mafathal Gabe, Chapter 5, Page 325. The Virtues of Tariya and Arafah Days. Discussing the virtues and majesty of the Tariya and Arafah days is of course also very important and needs to be understood by all Muslims. Regarding the primacy and majesty, these two days have enormous value in the sight of Allah. It is proven in the Quran that Allah says,
meaning, by the even and ayat, al fajr 3. Sheikh Abu Hafsamar bin Ali bin Adil ad Damisiki quoted the opinion of Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhama who argued, the meaning of the verse above is the day of Tarwiyah and the day of Arafah. In his book it is stated, قال ابن عباس الشفعي يوم التروية وعرفة والوتر يوم النحر Meaning, Ibn Abbas said, meaning of the verse Wasa'afi, namely the day of Tarwiyah and the day of Arafah, and the meaning of the verse Wal Watri, namely the day of sacrifice. Abu Hafs ad Demisiki, Al Lubab fi Yumil Kitabai Root, Daryl Fiker, 2005, Chapter 3, Page 418. The glory and majesty of the two days is very real wherein the verse above Allah swore directly on behalf of the two glorious days. Wallahu alam. And this a summary of the explanation of Tarwiya Day and Arafah Day. Don't forget to continue to support this channel by subscribing. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Back again with us Mix Hura Hura. We will never get tired of reminding us to support our channel by subscribing, liking, commenting, and sharing from Abu Qatada Radi Yalahu Anhu, Rasulullah Shallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The best of what a person leaves after he dies are three things. The first is a pious child who prays for him, charity that continues to flow to him, and knowledge that is practiced afterwards, reported by Ibn Mai. And we will continue to discuss it in the month of Julhijah. In fact, it is not only synonymous with Eid al Adha, sacrifice and pilgrimage. There are various practices that can be carried out by Muslims, especially in the first 10 days of the month of Julhijah. Remembering the month of Julhijah is one of the glorified months in Islam. As Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala said in QS. At Taba verse 36, which means, Surely the number of months with Allah is twelve months. In Allah's decree, when He created the heavens and the earth, among them are four forbidden months. That is the straight religion. So do not wrong yourself in the four months, and fight the polytheists all as they fight you all. And know that Allah is with those who are pious. Q.S. at Taba, 36. Muslims and Muslim women are encouraged to increase their worship. When entering the first 10 days of the month of Julhijah, starting from increasing the reading of the Quran, Dikr, Alms, and a number of other Sunnah practices. In addition, it is also recommended to perform Sunnah Julhijah fasting on 1 to 9 Julhijah. As Rasulullah Shallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, it means, There is no day when good deeds are more loved by Allah than these days namely the first ten days of Julhijah. The companions ask, not even from Jihad fi Sabalila? He reply, Jihad fi Sabalila neither, except for someone who left with himself and his wealth and he did not return with either of them. For this reason, it is good for Muslims to know the reading of the intention of fasting Julhijah from one to nine. Not only that, Muslims and Muslim women should also know the virtues and practices of fasting. Then what is the intention of fasting Julhijah from 1 to 9, along with its virtues and practices? Julhijah fasting intentions. Just like fasting in general, reading, or reciting the intention of fasting Julhijah is done at night. Where the time to read the intention of fasting Julhijah is from the setting of the sun until dawn, Launching from new online, there are three kinds of readings for the intention of fasting Julhijah according to the date. The reading of the intention of fasting Julhijah is as follows. 1. Intention to fast Julhijah 17. Nawaitu sawma shahri dhil hijjati sunnatan lillahi ta'ala. It means, I intend to fast the sun a month of Julhijah, because Allah ta'ala. 2. Intention to fast Julhijah on 8 Julhijah Tarwiyah Day. 
نويت صوم تروية سنة لله تعالى. It means I intend to fast the Tarwiyah Sunnah because Allah Taala. Three, intention to fast Jul Hijjah on nine Jul Hijjah day of Arafah. نويت صوم عرفة سنة لله تعالى. It means I intend to fast the Sunnah of Arafah because Allah Taala. The virtue of Jul Hijjah fasting. As one of the months glorified by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, the month of Jul Hija has several advantages of its own. The following are the virtues of Jul Hija fasting that can be known. One, rewards multiply. Muslims will get multiple rewards when they increase their worship and fast in the first ten days of the month of Jul Hija, as Rasulullah Sallallahu said. ما من أيام أحب إلى الله أن يتعبد له فيها من عشر ذي الحجة يعدل صيام كل يوم منها بصيام سنة وقيام كل ليلة منها بقيام ليلة القدر. It means there are no days that Allah prefers to worship other than the first ten days of the month of Jul Hija. One day of fasting in it is equivalent to one year of fasting. One night of establishing the evening prayer is equivalent to praying on the night of Laylatul Qadar (HR Atramidzi) to dot the blotting out of sins. Undergoing sunna fasting on the ninth of Jul Hijjah day of Arafah can help Muslims erase sins for two years, as Rasulullah Sallallahu said. صيام يوم عرفة أحتسب على الله أن يكفر السنة التي قبله والسنة التي بعده وصيام يوم عاشوراء أحتسب على الله أن يكفر السنة التي قبله. It means the fast of Arafah nine Jul Hijjah can erase the sins of a year ago and the next year. The fast of Ashura ten Muharram will erase the sins of the past year. Muslim HR. According to the majority of scholars, the sins that are erased due to the Arafah fast are minor sins. An Nawawi, Siyar Muslim, Juz 3, T, 113, 3. Dot the day of liberation from the torment of hell. Rasulullah Sallallahu said. ما من يوم أكثر من أن يعتق الله فيه عبدا من النار من يوم عرفة. وإنه لا يدنو ثم يباهي بهم الملائكة فيقول ما أراد هؤلاء. It means there is no day when Allah frees a servant from hell more than the day of Arafah, and indeed He approaches and makes them proud in front of the angels and says, What do they want? Muslim HR practices in the month of Jul Hijjah. A pray Jakir. Allah says which means so that they witness various benefits for them and so that they mention the name of Allah on the appointed day Surah Al-Hajj 28 Ibn Abbas radiallahu and Huma said the predetermined days are the first 10 days of the month of Jul Hijjah it is preferable for Muslims to recite dhikr in the first 10 days of the month of dhikr by increasing the number of takbirs tall and tamid Rasulullah Sa said which means So multiply in these days with Tald, Takbir, and Tamid, narrated by Ahmad, Sahih. B. Fast. Rasulullah Sa said which means By the one in whose hands my soul is, truly the smell of the mouth of a fasting person is more fragrant in the sight of Allah than the smell of muskol, mudafakun alay. C. Reciting Al Quran. Rasulullah Sa said, Al Quran of Dalu It means, the Quran is the best of dhikr, narrated by Ibn Kuzaimo, Sahih. D. Am's religious meal. Allah says, telling the moments when someone is about to die. وأنفقوا مما رزقناكم من قبل أن يأتي أحدكم الموت فيقول ربي لولا أخرتني إلى أجل قريب فأصدق وأكون من الصالحين. It means, and spend some of what we have given you before death comes to one of you. Then he said, O oh my Lord, why did you not postpone me until the time is near, so that I can give alms and I am among the righteous. 
qs.almanafiquin, 10. E. Sacrifice. Allah SWT says, which means, then pray to your Lord and make sacrifices. qs.alkautzer, 2. Sacrifice is a worship that is prescribed once a year and is carried out in the month of Julhijah. As Rasulullah saw said, which means, Whoever prays like we pray, and makes sacrifices like we offer sacrifices, then indeed he has made the sacrifice correctly. And whoever slaughters his sacrifice before the Eid Alat a prayer, then his sacrifice is invalid, narrated by al Bakari. F. Hajj. As the word of Allah SWT, which reads, Al Hajj Ashharu Ma'lumatin. It means, Hajj is in certain months. QS. Al 197. That's all I can summarize. I hope to add knowledge. And don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Come back with us mixing hura hura. So, you don't get left behind for the next video, we remind you to subscribe, and turn on the notification bell, enjoy the video. This time we will discuss the virtues, and practices of the 10 days of the month of Julhijah, before celebrating Eid al-Adha. In a few days Muslims will welcome the month of Julhijah. Julhijah is the 12th or last month of the Hydri calendar year. Julhijah is one of the holy months, Sayyar al-Haram, in Islam besides Julkaida, Maharam and Rajab. In Indonesia, the month of Julhijah is also often referred to as the month of Hajj. Launching from new online, Monday the 19th of June 2023, Julhijah is called one of the months that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala glorifies. It contains the obligation of Hajj, for those who are able to fulfill it. Meanwhile, people who cannot afford it are encouraged to increase other sunnah practices, such as almsgiving, prayer, and fasting. Therefore, the opportunity to worship is not only given to pilgrims. Anyone gets the opportunity to do good deeds, although in different forms. Article about the virtues of the month of Julhijah and the practice of the first ten days. One dot the virtues of the month of Julhijah and practice in the first ten days. When the month of Julhijah comes, Muslims are encouraged to do more good deeds. This is explained in a number of hadiths of Rasulullah Shallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one of which is the hadith narrated by Ibn Abbas which is in Sunan at Tirmidhi. قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ما من أيام العمل الصالح فيهن أحب إلى الله من هذه الأيام العشر. It means, Rasulullah shallallahu alaihi wasallam said, there is no other day that Allah likes to worship like these ten days. H.R. at Tirmidhi. The month of Julhijah is also full of history for Muslims. Among them are the pilgrimage and performing sacrifices. These two worships have a very large reward value in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are virtues in the first 10 days of Julhijah. The various practices of worship that are carried out at that time have better virtues than ordinary days. The virtues of the month of Julhijah are also explained in the hadith of Rasulullah shallallahu alaihi wasallam from Ibn Abbas radiyallahu and Huma that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said there is no day when good deeds are more loved by Allah than these days namely the ten days of the month of Julhijah they asked O Messenger of Allah not even jihad fi sabalillah he replied not even jihad fi sabalillah Except for people who leave jihad with their souls and wealth, then don't return with anything. Narrated by Bakari. Because of the great importance of the ten days, in the month of Julhijah, the Prophet strongly recommended his followers to do the good deeds they love more often. In fact, verbally saying Tayyiba sentences through remembrance and also bring priority to Muslims who do it.
Good deeds in those days become quite big meaning. Practice in the first ten days of the month of Julhijah. Because of these many virtues, good deeds are prescribed and extraordinary rewards are given. Among these charities are the following. 1. Fasting Fasting is indeed a pious practice that is very liked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In addition to the suggestion to fast Arafah, on the 9th of Julhijah, Muslims are also advised to increase their fast on the previous days, namely from the 1st to the 8th of Julhijah. Fasting on the 9th of Julhijah coincides with Muslims who are on pilgrimage and will undergo wukuf in the desert of Arafah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the fast of Arafah 9 Julhijah can erase the sins of a year ago and the next year. The fast of Ashura 10 Meharan will erase the sins of the past year or dot Muslim to dot pray Jakir. Ibn Abbas radiallahu and Huma said, the days that have been determined are the first 10 days of the month of Julhijah. Dikr which is preferred in these 10 days is to increase Takr Tal and Tamid. Rasulullah shallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, فَأَكْثِرُوا فِيهِنَّ مِنَ التَّهْلِيلِ وَالتَّكْبِيرِ وَالتَّحْمِيدِ So multiply in those days with Tal, Takbir, and Tamid, narrated by Ahmad, Sahih. Not only done in the mosque or at home, but this dikr can be done anywhere and anytime. Even the companions of the Prophet, deliberately did it in crowded places, such as markets. Al-Bakari said, Ibn Umar and Abu Huraira always went out to the markets. In the first ten days of Julhijah, they recited the Takbir, and people also took part in the Takbir because they heard the Takbir from the two of them. 3. Read the Al-Quran Muslims are encouraged to complete the Al-Quran within 10 days. You can complete the reading of the Al-Quran by reading three chapters every day. This is actually easy to do, namely by taking advantage of the time before and after Fardhu prayers. By reading three sheets before prayer and three sheets after prayer, in Allah, in 10 days we will be able to complete the Quran. The point is Mujahada serious. 3. Sacrifice Kurban Sacrifice is a worship that is prescribed once a year and is carried out in the month of Julhijah. One of the teachings about sacrifice is written in the Al-Quran Surah al katsur verse 2. Then pray to your Lord and make sacrifices. Qs. Akatsar, 2. In addition, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Man salla salatina wa nuska naskunan, faqad asaba nuska. Wa man nasaka qabla salati fala nasak lahu. Whoever prays as we pray and makes sacrifices like we offer sacrifices, then indeed he has made the sacrifice correctly. And whoever slaughters his sacrifice before the Eid Alat a prayer, then his sacrifice is invalid, narrated by al-Bakari. This shows that the sacrifice is a specialty, and Sayar, which is only found in the month of Julhijah. That's all of our videos, and the discussion that I made up to here. May all prayers be granted by al Subhanahu wa ta'ala ameen. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.